Hey guys, I was out from a walk there and I thought I would record a short introduction to the GraphQL subscription video. And it's, uh, of course I'm in Switzerland right now, and it's minus two degrees and it's April. So we are waiting very patiently for summer to arrive or for the temperature to go up and that's Celsius of course. So in today's video, I'm gonna be creating a, an example of using a GraphQL subscription. And what is a GraphQL subscription and what is probably one use case? So a GraphQL subscription is essentially a long-lived GraphQL read operation that will operate over a WebSocket. And an example would be, let's say if you're a user and you connect to a server, well, let's say if you want to receive notifications, instead of continuously polling the server, checking, do you have a notification? Do you have a notification? You can connect once to the notifications subscription API and therefore the server knows you're connected. And as an event happens or a notification happens in the system that you should know about, the server can then push directly the notification to you. So it saves that continuously polling. You establish the connection and you can push it down. The sim similar examples could be for likes of stock updates. There's lots of different changes. They're continuously fluctuating. So instead of having to pull for them, if you need a stream of these, you can connect and it's going to just push you them down the, the web socket. So I hope you guys enjoy this example. I'm going to be using a little bit of Reactor in the back end to identify that. And yeah, there's some, there's actually some Swiss cows here to the right. So I'm going to try and get a wee video for you. And I hope you enjoy the, the code. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating some GraphQL subscriptions and I'm going to be writing the code and demoing and explaining what I'm doing. But if you don't want to watch the full video, you can go to my GitHub. So it's philip-jvm and go to the repositories and go to learn spring boot GraphQL. And inside the pull requests, you'll see a, a closed pull request called chapter 33. And inside here, you can see the changes I made to enable the WebSockets and GraphQL subscriptions. But for those who want to actually watch the code, the first thing we need to do is bring down a dependency called Reactor Core. And in this tutorial, we're going to be using Reactor for our implementation of our reactive streams. And we're, how, why we're going to be using this is to enable the mutation resolver to publish changes to a processor from Reactor and Reactor will then push, will use that processor to feed the subscribers. And the first thing we need to do to get started with this is go ahead and create a subscription. And that's in our schema. So let's go ahead and call this subscription. GraphPLS, so we need to first get, add this add a subscription to our schema. I'm sorry for the mechanical keyboard, but yeah, it's all I have at the moment. So yeah, they love it. You hate it. And inside here, let's go ahead and create two resolvers or two subscriptions. So one's going to be called bank accounts, and we're going to give all the bank account changes so of every bank account to this subscriber. And for those who don't want all the changes, but they only want to subscribe to a particular bank account ID, they can use the second subscription called bank account. Now, that's all we need to do here in the schema. Now we need to actually go and create, let me zoom in for you. Now we need to go and create a resolver for this, so a subscription resolver. So let's go ahead and create a new class and we can call this bank account subscription. And in here we want to make this a spring bean. And we also want a required args constructor. And what we want to do here is implement the GraphQL subscription resolver. So it's now going to be picked up by 
Spring Boot GraphQL, which was over. And the methods in here must match the subscription schema methods. So the first one is called bank account. So what we want to do is return a publisher of type reactive streams. So it's brought in the wrong publisher here. And we want that to be of type bank account. And the method name will be bank accounts. So now we bring in the right class. So the reactive streams one. And the second method we have is bank account, which takes in an ID, which will be a UUID in this case. And what we want is a publisher. So we want to create this. And this publisher will be used between our mutation resolvers and our subscribers to really coordinate and push the changes. Let's put that in this class. And of course, this needs to be a spring bean as well. And let's add a log here we're going to use. So that's L4J. And inside here, we're going to let the IDE do the heavy lifting. So we say return publisher dot get bank account publisher and here let's return a new method so for id so now we go and create this method so we have two methods now get bank account publisher and get bank account publisher for a particular ID. And we also need this publisher inside our mutation resolver. So inside this guy. And whenever a bank account is created or it's updated, we want to publish that. So they both call this method, so we're going to use it. So we're going to say publish bank account. And of course, this method doesn't exist, so we go and create that contract as well. Let's move it to the top here. Now, so now we need some way of coordinating this publish method should map to this publisher and this publisher. And that's where we're going to use Spring Reactor, which is version 3.3. If you're using 3.4, you can use flux or syncs.many, but because we're using version 3.3, .3, we're going to use a flux processor. So here we use a flux processor of type bank account. And here we want a flux sync, which is going to be tied to the processor. And how we do that is let's go ahead and create a constructor. And we're going to just set the processor for this example to a direct processor. And we're going to serialize it on the same thread. So create a safely gets multi-threaded producers. So we have to do this because we're publishing from Tomcat threads, which are multi-threaded. So we need to, to serialize it. And the sync is going to be the processor sync. So what we can do is use the publish method. So we call next bank account. So when there's a change happens, so when the, whenever somebody mutates, a bank account changes it, we publish it. The publish it then pushes to the sync. The sync is then feeds the, the processor. And now what do we do with the processor? Well, that's what we use this method for. So if you call get a bank account publisher, we can simply return the processor, but let's just have a map method. So just so we know what's, what's actually changing. So publishing um, bank, account, bank account, let's 
let's keep this, keep it simple for now. And for the particular one, for the ID, we want to add an additional filter on here. So let's say filter. And we can say id.equals bank account.getID. So first of all, we're gonna we're gonna filter the bank accounts. So we're only listening for the ones that equal a certain ID. If the ID does not equal the one we're listening to, then we don't send it to the client. Otherwise, we'll we'll publish a individual bank account. So we publish individual subscription for bank account. So therefore. When our subscribers actually subscribe to this, because Reactor will use the full filter chain to build the publisher when you call subscribe, these can be fed directly to our subscribers. So that looks like we have a full flow of linking publisher to subscriber. And now we need to add in the custom GraphQL context builder. So at the moment we don't support WebSockets. So let's go ahead and support them. What we need to do is use the default GraphQL, I can't remember, the default GraphQL WebSocket context. So we create the context and we set the session and we set the handshake request. You can optionally set the data loader, but we don't need to here. So let's go ahead and build. And we return this. Now, if you need access to the session or handshake request, you can, of course, inject that in. So we say data fetching environment. So you can get context or whatever it is here. So let me go ahead and play this and see if I've forgot anything. Okay, it looks like it's Started, which is nice to see first time well so if I come back to my playground let me refresh this from my example what we want to do for this subscription is to subscribe to bank account updates for everything so now we're listening and then when we come here this is our second subscriber we've got another client here we want to listen to only this so let's go ahead and subscribe to bank accounts per ID. We're listening. And we can use this guy as our publisher. So first of all, let's do the create bank account. So if I create a bank account, so E4A. E4A has been published to our first subscriber. We've got nothing for the second. Let's create, create, and create. There's another three. CDD was the last CDD, and then we can update EFT8, so it's not the same. So we should see two a few changes to our subscriber here. So we have EF, 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 and that's because I published it three times. And I do another one, and there's the next one. And again, we still have nothing here because it's on DF87. So if I copy this. ID, I set it here, and then I do an update. This will be substituted into the bank account ID. So I call update. Now we should have our first message in the second client, and we do. So DF. So you can see here when it when it updates. And if we stop the client and inside the bank account, we want to. Uh, Created at, which I think our code changes each time. So we create a new subscription and we call update. You can see here it's created at 12, 50, 45, 36. And then we do update again. So it's changed, it's the new one, it's 44. So that way now we have two GraphQL subscriptions and we're publishing to two different users, different messages. One gets everything and one just gets some target messages. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed this tutorial using Spring Boot GraphQL subscriptions and some reactor to, to create the publishers.
and I will see you in the next episode.